And welcome to those of you following the Iceman Coach Mode Dynasty. We're in week nine already of 2023. And this week, Texas State will be taking on the South Alabama Jaguars. Let's go ahead and look around the country at the top stories. First of all, Georgia Tech upsets defending national champion North Carolina as the Tar Heels. Uh, I guess they're kind of suffering from that hangover, the national title hangover. They've already lost two games. They're 4-2, and two, number 19 in the country. So tough loss there for North Carolina. And Alabama beats Arkansas as the Crimson Tides get back on track after their uh, loss to Ole Miss. They beat Arkansas 28-26. Um, obviously a very close game, but Alabama gets it done. Huskies muzzled. Number three, Washington loses a shocker to Pac-12 opponent California 38-20. Washington every season, they seem to have this kind of loss. They lose a game somewhere like this to a team they probably should beat. And it costs them a chance at the national title playoff. Uh, we'll see if it does again this season. They dropped to number seven. Cornhuskers humbled the Spartans. Home field advantage was too much for the Cornhuskers to overcome as Nebraska loses at Michigan State. They lose 24-14. to Tough loss there for Nebraska. And Vanderbilt upsets Georgia. The, the Commodores are building quite the program. They win 33-17 over the Bulldogs. Georgia falls to number five. Meanwhile, Vanderbilt is number eight. And they have a real shot to win the Eastern Division now. If you remember last year... This Vanderbilt-Georgia game had Eastern Division ramifications, but the Bulldogs won in Athens. This year in Nashville, Vanderbilt gets it done. And uh, they pull. Away. They were up 19-17 going into the fourth, and they pull away with a couple fourth-quarter touchdowns. So um, big win for Vanderbilt there. And Iowa upsets Ohio State. Uh, they win 34-27. to uh, They go into the... Um, well, we'll look at the fourth quarter, how the fourth quarter went. Uh, it was tied 27-27 until a late Iowa touchdown with seven seconds to go. And the Hawkeyes now take control of, uh, well, probably of, of their Big Ten division. And then they have a, now they're in the national title playoff race. Ohio State's still right there. They're on the cusp, but they're going to have to probably win out. Uh, Lubbock is celebrating after a sweet victory over Big 12 rival Texas as Texas Tech beats Texas the, the week after the Longhorns beat Oklahoma. Uh, Longhorns always see this, this seems to happen to them. They'll have a big win every year, and then they, the very next week, they lose to a mediocre opponent. And so Texas, they just, they can never quite seem to make that final step. Uh, it's kind of similar to Washington, really. And all eyes will be on the Oregon-USC game this week. These two teams are having disappointing seasons. Oregon was ranked in the top five. They've lost two games. USC was number one at one point, and they've lost three. So um, big game this week for both teams as they try and you know get their um, finish the season with something. Um, so there's the top stories. We'll look real quick at the top 25. Number one is Florida now. Um, Number two, Notre Dame. And number three, Iowa. Those are your last three big-time Power 5 undefeated teams. Uh, Notre Dame, I guess they're not Power 5, are they? They're independent, but they're number two now. Uh, Alabama has moved back into the playoff hunt. They're number four. Georgia is number five. Ohio State, number set, uh, six. Washington is seven. Vanderbilt is eight. Arkansas is nine. And Clemson is ten. Don't look now, but the Tigers are starting to climb back in. Number 11 is Oklahoma. Number 12 is Purdue. Number 13, Wisconsin. Texas falls to 14. Texas A&M, after a win over Auburn, moves up to 15. Texas Tech jumps into the top 25, all the way to number 16, as they are actually undefeated. Nebraska falls out of the top 10 to number 17 after that loss to Michigan State. Michigan beats Maryland, so they move up to number 18. Number 19, North Carolina. Number 20 is Memphis, still undefeated after a 30-21 win at Troy. Pittsburgh uh, b uh, moves up to 21 after Widow Wake Forest is Cal with a win over Washington as they are now thir uh, winning 38 to 20, so they're 22. Ole Miss after the win at LSU, they are up to number 23. Uh, USC falls to 24, and Oregon is number 25 after an overtime win against Colorado. So that is your top 25. Real quick look at the Heisman race. Um, Kendall Milton still number one, and Grayson McCall, despite what was a very disappointing performance last week against our team, is still second, so he still has a chance if he can 
Uh, keep his prolific numbers going. Meanwhile, Peter Parrish of Memphis had a good game against uh, Troy, so he is third. McAvore is fourth, and then Naquan Wright is fifth. So let's look at um, uh, recruiting real quick. We want to spend a lot of time on recruiting. Um, not had any new commitments, but this is a big visit week here. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys coming in this week including our quarterback t uh, target, Gerald Starks. We're the only one going after him, uh, so we really hope to get him signed this week as he makes his visit on campus. Of course, might need a good performance against South Alabama. Uh, Phillip James, meanwhile, is a running back we've started targeting. Um, things actually look good. We made a big jump this week. We're up to uh, second place, uh, but if you notice at the bottom there, it looks like Penn State may be coming after him, so... We're going to have to try and uh, get on our horse, hopefully, to just to get that uh, finished quickly. He is a Juco, but he'll come in and give us a little depth. He's got uh, good speed, 93, so um, we hope to get him signed on. Uh, Banks, we're, we're surely we're close to getting him. Um, nobody is, is making any moves towards him at all. Not sure what that's about because he's actually, I mean, a 74 rated uh, overall. And he, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he's a true freshman. So, um, not, you know, he's not got great speed, not great acceleration, not great agility, but that 74 overall is good. All of his other uh, attributes are, are high. Uh, Brian McFadden, he's, uh, he's somebody that we need to get signed. Is he coming in this week? Yeah, he's. Um, he visits this week, but he's also got visits scheduled, as you can see, with Arkansas and TCU. So, um, and we've got big leads, and we're increasing it every week. But if Arkansas TCU start coming after him, it's hard to imagine that he won't uh, end up with them. So we um, he, we need to get him signed as quick as possible. James Fine, um, you know, we're, we've we've kind of jumped out in front on him. Uh, we're we're get, we're putting. Rice, New Mexico, North Texas behind us a little bit, but they, he still visits those guys later. So he's another guy that, you know, the clock could be ticking to get him signed. Uh, Calhoun's a guy we're not even really hardly going after, but we still lead on him. James Johnson, uh, Hemphill, as you can kind of see, Hemphill's another guy where it's just, I don't know if we have time. Um, and we're losing. What I'm trying to do, I'm just, he visits this week. The visit hopefully will put him into, or will help, will put us in front. But he was at Texas A&M next week, so he's a guy. If we don't sign him this week, we may just have to stop uh, going after him because he'll he'll end up with A&M, which is fair enough. Um, Jefferson, we've taken the lead on Jefferson, and we've had it there for a couple weeks, and we, um, and we're only we're only gaining we're only putting 60 points a week distance between us and UTSA but he visits them in week 14 so again clock is ticking we need to get him signed on uh, Hackett we leave it for him Samson we leave for him we lead on a lot of guys but we need these guys to sign and then we get into some guys who have just kind of started going after uh, Josh Hall a Juco athlete Craig Miller another Juco athlete uh, Hopefully we can get those guys signed. Really, the, the hope is that they'll end up at the secondary because we need secondary players. Uh, and then another offensive lineman who I'm putting a little bit towards to hopefully we get some guys signed. And then another defensive tackle. Uh, defensive tackle, a position of need, and I just I got to make sure I get the guys that I need, I need for that. Um, and, you know, we, we've got kind of a policy of, of right now, you know, at least 62, 63, and up. And, um, you know, we feel like with that, obviously, the, that is not a high enough rating to come in right away and start, but it will hopefully, you know, help us to have depth. Um, so, South Alabama, what about South Alabama? That is our opponent for this week. They are a Sun Belt opponent. Um, they've actually had kind of a tough year. We'll go back and look at their schedule. So they, they have a big win, though. They've got a marquee win at TCU. Um, they, win, they won 55 to 24. But they have losses to Alabama, Georgia. And then they lost to Georgia State and Louisiana Monroe in conference. But as you can see, they were competitive in both of those games. And they were competitive against Georgia. They only lose by 10. So, um, yeah, they're not going to be the worst opponent that you're going to see. As a matter of fact, go back. they have... Uh, a more talented roster than we do um so 
which you know so far our system has kind of worked uh we'll see if it works again today looking at their depth chart um we'll start by saying that south alabama on offense they run um a multiple offense which is they use the south carolina playbook so i guess it's kind of like the old steve spurrier stuff but they run most of the time so they um yeah we can expect them to run and we don't have a great defensive line so if south alabama gets the run game going they're going to be tough their quarterback, Ganey, is a 79. Um, he's got decent speed. Their backup, McGee, is the same. Um, so really, the two, whichever of these two guys is in, they're going to have, you know, resi- the, the production will be the same. Uh, their arms are similar. Ganey has a little stronger arm and a little more accurate. So his arm is a little better. But if McGee has to come in, um, they won't miss much. Running back, uh, their running backs are not great, and they're not super fast, but um, we'll uh, look at the rest of it. So their fullback is a 66, not, you know, nothing too scary. These are receivers, 83, 82, 82. Again, not super fast. They're number six receiver, though, at fields. If he gets on the field, uh, he's got a 90 speed, um, but his agility and acceleration are a little lower. So he's a guy that'll take him a little while to get to top speed, but if they get in the ball, um, he could be a threat. But he's sick, so he may not even he may not even see the field. Um, tight end, 79. Offensive line, 78, 79, 78, 84, 78. So they've got a their offensive line isn't great, but it doesn't take much of an offensive line to kind of neutralize our defensive line. Left end, they're a 78. Vineguard and 87 on the right. He's going to be a struggle. So on our left side, we've got to expect him um, to be able to get to the quarterback. Defensive tackles are 85 and 84. That's pretty good. And so now they run a 3-4 defense, which means Thomas is going to be uh, the one who's on the field the most. Um, but when Cooley comes onto the field, again, they don't lose much. And in fact, they pick up some speed. He's uh, faster than Thomas. So uh, then left outside linebacker is an 81. Middle linebacker is 78, and their other one is a 75. So um, up the middle, they're not as strong. But Bentley on the right, again, is an 88. So our left side of the field is where they're going to be the best. Um, their corners are 85. So those, those are good, solid Sunbelt corners. And Poss is even 89. Now their other corner, Melton, is not super fast. Uh, and but their nickelback is a 93 speed. He's a 78 overall, and the dimeback is a 78 overall. So they'll match up pretty well against our receivers. Um, the only one that might be an issue for them is Melton. If if we can get off of Melton, he will struggle to cover our guys. So which is a thought because our speed guys are on the outside. They're the ones who run the fades and the goes the most. So if we can get in behind him. Hey, we can make some big plays. Johnson, 76 free safety, and their strong safety is 75. So on the back end, um, they're not quite as good. Uh, so really, you know, up the middle, again, except for defensive tackle. Their defensive tackles are very good, but when you get the middle linebacker and the safeties, uh, that would be, I guess, the weakness of their team. Uh, oh, I didn't look at the kickers. We need to look at the kickers. Kicking game has been important for us. Uh, our kickers are pretty good. 85, uh, kickers in 90, punters in 85. And we've seen in some games where the uh, if you're the kickers, if they don't have good kickers, it makes a difference. Evans is 75. He's a true freshman. He's a good true freshman. But as overall, as a kicker, uh, he may not be the best. But usually what that means is they've got a low awareness and good attributes yeah he's got good power but not great accuracy so if he comes down to a kick uh, that may be good and then their punter uh, he's got 72 power and only 59 accuracy uh, and he's a 65 overall so their punter is not great so we do have an advantage in the kicking game so let's go ahead and get the game started see if we can uh, keep our winning streak going and here we see the stats. Um, South Alabama, um, they're obviously a rushing team. We knew that coming in. We've, I, I did kind of look at their statistics before the video started. Um, 
They're uh, not great against the pass. And tr the truth is their defense has been not productive at all. But you got to remember, they've played they've played three Power 5 teams. They've played Alabama. They've played Georgia. They've played TCU. So when you're a Sun Belt team, you can't expect to have that schedule and then still have, you know, a highly statistically rated defense. Um so hopefully, you know, that'll translate to success for us. We've got like seven prospects in, but here's three. McFadden, a four-star wide receiver. He's only a 67 overall. So that, that he's, you know, I don't want to call him a bust, but he's not as high as most four-star players. Uh, then we've got Starks, the uh, prototypical quarterback. He's 6'6", 227. He's in. He wants us to pass. Both of those guys want us to pass for over 250 yards. And then James Johnson on the defensive line. He wants three sacks with the D-line and then to have two TFLs with the D-line. So hopefully we can get that done. Our top players, of course, Arona, Clark, and Bailey. Meanwhile, South Alabama. Bentley, right, set, right outside linebacker, right in Vinegard, and then the defensive tackle Thomas are their top players. So today we are going with the all maroons. Maroon hats, shirts, and pants um, because South Alabama is all white. So we just thought we would do a counter thing. And as we see here, we have the top, we have one of the best passing offenses in the country, and they have one of the worst. But we have one of the worst rushing offenses, and they've got a pretty good one. Obviously, we throw for more uh, passing touchdowns uh, than them, and they have more rushing touchdowns. So it's a real contrast of styles today. South Alabama wants to keep us off the field. And um, if they can do that, I mean, anything can happen. Here comes the Bobcats. They are pumped, ready to go. I mean, you'd have to say that um, Texas State, our roster is really, it's, it's a situation where anyone can beat us. If Clark comes out and he struggles, South Alabama gets some points on the board and then you know, takes an early lead, they have the chance to get their running game going and... Uh, really have a good shot to get this upset win today, so we're gonna have to make sure we're on um, on point. We're here at Bobcat Stadium in San Marcos. So here he comes. He's got three receivers to his right, one to his left. He's back to throw. Screen again, but he can't get it off, and he is sacked for an 11 yard loss. It'll be Texas State ball after a Nice three and out on the first drive for South Alabama. Third and 12 here for Clark. Got two receivers to his left, one to his right. Across the middle, it's complete, and that is going to be a first down to Dixon. Frank Dixon with the catch. He picks up 14 yards on that completion. And we're going to come out with a bubble screen here to Jantz. And he, out to his left, he pushes away a tackler, and then he fumbles. And South Alabama recovers at the 21. Should I challenge? All right, we get it back. So that'll be second and seven. Well, we're going to run our stick base RPO here. And we're going to call a run. He's got five in the box, so Let's see if we can pick it up on the ground. And he he'll takes it up the middle, gets a nice gain. Seven yards. Here we are, third and five. We're in our, what we call our triangle formation. Three receivers to the left. And he gets it out of the backfield to, to uh, Hill, who gets close to the first down. It's fourth and inches. Decision time here for Coach Clawson. We're going to hand this off, go right up the middle to Calvin Hill. And he will score. Touchdown, Texas State. The Bobcats take the early lead. It's six to nothing. And kick is up and good. <laughs> go. All right. Keep it simple. I like it. Either, it's either that or 60. So defense was awesome on the first drive. Let's see what they can do second drive here. Third and 13 here. Ganey comes out. Two receivers to his left. One to the right with the tight end. He brings the tight end across the formation to his left. Then takes the snap. And he is sacked again. Two sacks already for Brian Wright as this was kind of a cover sack, although he made a nice move on his tackle, on his, um, on his blocker to shed it, and then gets the sack. Third and ten. Clark back to throw. 
Pocket holds, but he eventually is sacked. Took too long. We lose seven yards. We'll have to punt. Yeah, he uh, just couldn't hold long enough. Got to get the ball away quicker. Our offense is kind of based on getting the ball away quick, and if you don't, that's going to happen. So here comes, I forget my punter's name, but he punts it away. He called for a fair catch, and that quickly careens into the end zone. So South Alabama ha is, has negative 21 yards right now on offense. Third down at 14 here. Ganey has two receivers to his right, one to his left. He brings the tight end across the formation from his left to his right, takes the snap. Throws, and that is to no one. Fourth down, 14. Our defense has been dominant so far. All right, second eight running smash to our right. Clark had three receivers to his right. He looks, and he's Clark's going long. Oh, he's got a man wide open, but Jan steps out after that catch. How did he get so open? Looks like the safety that was out there for no reason whatsoever cut inside. So uh, first and goal. All right, second and goal. Running kind of a motion mesh here. Clark looks, throws it. He gets it complete to Horn, who scores the touchdown. And that will put us up by two scores here in the first quarter. Pending the extra point. It's been all Texas State so far. South Alabama has not had a positive yardage play. There you see Brian Wright, three tackles, three TFLs, and two sacks. That's what they need to do. They need to throw more to the back. Here's uh, He fakes the handoff. He gets it to tight end, I think, out of the um, over to, into the flat, and he gets 10 yards on the catch. South Alabama now near midfield. Ganey takes the snap. Across the middle, it is complete to Brandon Hayes for four yards. South Alabama here with trips to the right. Ganey takes the snap, throws it deep, and he it is complete. That was a 23-yard reception to Keyshawn Wood Woodyard. Ganey's got three receivers to his right. It's tied into his left. Here in the gun, he makes an adjustment, takes the snap. He's looking, throws to, throws to his right, but he, it's way short of the open receiver, so it'll be fourth down. So this will be about a 42-43 yarder for the kicker. Snap, the hold is good, the kick is up, and it is good. So South Alabama gets on the board here, 14-3, to with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. Looks like he just snuck it, snuck it through. So you see our offense, we've had a pretty good day so far. Third and 10 at the 40, uh, 45. Clark takes the snap. South Alabama blitzes. He gets it to the back, but but uh, Jeter is hit for a four-yard loss. Nothing going on that drive. And that is the end of the first quarter. Uh, uneven first quarter. Uh, our defense really carried us. I don't want to say carried us, but got us the ball in good field position, and we made it count, and we have a 14-3 lead here. So South Alabama comes out here. Two receivers to his left. He's got a tight end and another receiver to, sorry, two receivers to his right. He brings the tight end from left to right. Pump fake here by the quarterback, Ganey. And it is picked off. He was he floated a pass up there. And who is that? Not sure who it is, but he may have got hurt right there at the end. Gibson. Gibson, who I think is a corner. Makes the pick, then he hit, runs into his own man, gets tackled, and that may be an injury. So we come out here first and 10 at the South Alabama 46. Another drive with good field position. Handoff up the middle to Hill. He has a big game right there. That's 15 yards. First and 10 for the Bobcats. And this is where we get cute with our Emory Henry formation. I'm going to just run a screen. And he goes to his left. He gets it to McDowell, who does not get it into the end zone. Only gains a yard, so it'll be fourth down. We'll just probably just take the points here. 
Going to give our, ch our kicker Arona a chance to increase his stats. And that kick is good. So 17 to 3. And here comes Ganey. Three receivers to his right, one to his left in the shotgun. And he's back to throw. Throws it to his right. It's complete. And the receiver picks up nine yards before he's pushed out of bounds. Ganey again. Here he's got two receivers to each side. Fakes the handoff. Well, it's a read option. He keeps it and goes straight up the middle. This is a big gain for him. He's going to get to midfield, and we probably face mask him there at the end. I think we did. They threw a flag. Yeah, so that's an even bigger gain. And Ganey again, three receivers to his right, one to his left. On the read option this time, he gives it, and Phillips gets away, and he gets into the secondary and picks up 17 yards. South Alabama now on the move. First and 10, going to try and do his zone blitz here. Ganey is back to throw. He's in trouble, and he gets dropped. The zone blitz worked. A rare case where a blitz actually brings a sack as Christian Archangel gets back there for the TFL sack. Ganey here, three receivers to his left, one to his right in the gun. It's one back. He throws a bubble screen, or just a quick screen, and it is tackled immediately. Woodward brought down for a two-yard loss, third and 19. And here at third and 19, Ganey has two receivers to each side. He takes a snap. And he moves around in the pocket, and he, he might have had a man, but he throws it short, so it'll be 4th and 19 here. So South Alabama sends their kicker out to try to bring the lead back down to 11. This will be about a 45-yarder. And it's up. And he misses it. He missed it. Let's see what happened here. It's hard to see from the angle that the, it shows it to you. He, just, he sent it across to the right, and it was close, but it's no good. Here comes Clark out here, second and two, at about the 30, what, 35, 36. And it's complete to Horn, and he will pick up about 11 yards, so it'll be first and 10 here. Second and one for Texas State here. Clark takes the snap. And he throws it to Hill out of the backfield. This time Hill, in space, picks up a 14 yards on that catch. I'm right, going to run our exit motion series here. Send Hill, actually that's Jeter, out to the right of the formation. And he throws to his left, though, and he finds Horn. That will be 11 yards and a first down. Running X shallow here. Out of ace. Clark. He's got, he's had, he had X all along. Oh, but look at that chance in the back of the end zone running kind of the wheel fade. And he hits him for the touchdown. Clark's like, what do you know, coach? Uh, Jansen's route had ended, so he cuts it to the middle and is open. Here, Gantz has, again, two receivers and the tight end to his left, one to his right. He throws it to the tight end, to his right, and there's a flag. And that's probably roughing the passer. So USA, again, picks up an extra 15 yards there. Coach Clawson is not happy. He's letting the refs hear about it. Ganey with a tight formation here. Across the middle, it's complete, but it is short of the first down. It'd be fourth and two. What will South Alabama do? I would go for it. Fourth and two. Ganey's got two receivers to the left with two tight set. He'll bring one tight end from the left to his right. Takes a snap. He's in trouble here. We blitzed, and it pays off. Turnover on downs as Ganey is sacked. Is that Chris Archangel again? It is. Chris Archangel, second sack. Second and ten. Handoff up the middle goes to Hill, and Hill weaves his way to the first down. 11-yard pick up there. We're going to run smash. But it looks like... I'm going to bring Dixon in on a slant, because it looks like we're going to have a lot of space towards the middle. He, we did have space there, and he goes to Hill in the middle, who picks up 10 yards inside the 10, so we're at the 7 here. Third and goal. Here we go. See if Clark can finish this drive. Cross the middle. That time, it's pretty much the same route ran there. Jance makes that catch. And so now we have a 30-3 to lead pending the extra point. And it is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. 
And I just noticed that something had happened with what was supposed to be my desktop audio sound. I have it re I put it back in, but that means we went most of the first half with no audio from in-game, so I apologize for that. But here on the return, Bailey gets it out to up to the South Alabama 44. We look at our offense. Had a pretty good day so far. I'm going to go with Z shallow here. We're in our A set, two receivers to each side. He looks, he throws it to Hill out of the backfield, who will pick up a few yards, gets 11 on the play, so it'll be first and 10 near the 30. I think just past the 30. Third and six here. Got three receivers to his right, one to his left. Clark back to throw across the middle. It is complete to Jance. He gets it up inside the 10. And we'll go ahead and take a timeout there. Second and goal. Clark to throw. Into the corner, he's got Jantz. It is complete, and that is gonna give us a five touchdown lead. It's 37 to three, near the end of the first half. Third and eight at the 44. We're gonna kind of run a wheel concept, and Clark here, and he tries to force that in, and it was knocked away. So fourth down and eight. So we're gonna go for this. I've always wanted to be more aggressive. That's always been the plan. And in this situation, I feel like I can be. And he gets it up the middle. That was to Burgess. That is complete. That's a 16 yard catch. Might seem like we're trying to run up the score, whatever. Uh, but we were on their half of the field. We couldn't kick a field goal. First and 10 here, he got three to his left. One to the right, we're running mesh. And he's in trouble, sacked. He held it too long. Looked like he was going to try to go long there, but he is dropped for an eight-yard loss. He probably had the mesh guys open, but he was trying to get greedy, probably. Second and 18 coming up. Third and 15 at the 34. As long as we don't take a sack, I'm probably going to go for the field goal here. Horn takes the snap. There's a sail. He goes to his right, and he's got it to Horn, who gets 13 yards. Fourth down. We'll probably go ahead and kick this. This will be a 39-yard field goal for Arona. The snap, the hold, the kick is good. So we take a 41-3 lead past midway through the third quarter. That was kind of a time-consuming drive for us. Gainey now has got two receivers and the tight end to his right. Looks to throw and throws it away. Oh, but we have a flag. That'll probably be rough on the passer. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Roughing, roughing the passer. passer. Defense. Defense. Yeah, so that'll be first down for South Alabama. Automatic, Automatic first, first down. down. Gainey here has got two receivers to each side. He's going to throw. Looks like they got another screen, and it's set up pretty well. Phillips... Brings it back to midfield. We have a flag. Tell me that's like holding or something. Personal Personal foul. Foul. Roughing Roughing nope. Passer. We rough the passer again. So even though we held them again, they're going to have another first down. Bingo, bingo. Automatic first, first down. down. And Ganey here has got uh, two receivers each side in tight formations. He throws to his left. It is complete. And that is... Oh, we have another flag. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Roughing, Roughing the passer. passer. Defense. Automatic first down. Third and nine. Gaining three receivers to his right, one to his left. Snap. And he is in the pocket. Throws across the middle. It's complete. And Hopper has the ball at the one-yard line. We bring him down before he can score. Ganey here. Two receivers to his right. The tight end moves across to his right. Hand off. No, it's the read option. He keeps, and he will score. Touchdown, South Alabama. Third and six. Clark. Looks. Across the middle. That goes to Miguel. He does turn it upfield. He'll get a ten, about 10 yards there. Second and five, Clark with three receivers to his right. He drops back, South Alabama blitzes, and he hits, who is that, is that Burgess? Yeah, that's Burgess for a big play. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. And roughing the passer will get us more yards. Still first down. Second three, and Clark with three receivers to his right. Handoff goes through uh, Jeter, who 
finds a hole and gets 11 yards. It'll be first and goal coming up. Clark with two tight ends in this formation. This is our rot formation, I think. And the handoff goes up the middle. That is to Jeter. He scores. Texas State goes up 47 to 10 with the extra point coming right at the end of the third quarter. That is the end of the third quarter. And it's all, pretty much all she wrote now. We have just absolutely dominated this game from beginning to end. Even South Alabama's one touchdown was because of three Texas State penalties. Gaining here two receivers to each side. Takes the snap. Throws to his left. It is complete to the back. Who will get the first down. Nine yards on that catch. Ganey's got a bunch to his right. He takes the snap. Throws, and it's complete. Uh, receiver running a little, kind of a spot route. It's now first and ten. In this play, Ganey's got three to his right. Takes the snap. Throws across the middle. Oh, it's dropped. He might have been able to get the first down had he caught that. Fourth down for South Alabama. South Alabama running back will be back soon. And South Alabama is going for this. Can't blame them. They're near midfield. Pass across the middle is complete. And he will get the first down. That's Hopper. The tight end gets seven yards. Third down and eight. Bunch formation. Bunch receivers to the right. Handoff on the draw. And he only gets three yards. So it's going to be fourth down and five. South Alabama going for it. Again, three to his right. Tight end on his left. Takes the snap. Across the middle, it's complete again to the tight end. That's Hopper. And we have a flag. Of course we do. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Roughing, Roughing the passer. The passer. Defense. Defense. Still, Still first down. down. Here Ganey's got two receivers to each side on third and ten. Throws it across the middle of the back out of the backfield. He will get a few yards, but he's short. Fourth and three. And they're in the goal line set. Uh, Ganey, though, throws it to the back. Did he get there? No, he didn't. Newberry only gets two yards, so it'll be Texas State ball. We've got the second teamers in for this, uh, for this drive. Probably the first team's done for the day. The quick pass by Felder goes out to, uh, I don't know, oh, Horn for eight yards. It'll be second and two. Third and eight. And Felder here again, three to his right. Takes the snap. And South Alabama again blitzes. And this time he, he completes the pass. And the receiver shakes off a tackler. That's Jeremy Davis. I have no idea who that is. I think that's a tight end. Because he did, looks like a linebacker. And he puts that defender onto the ground and then stumbles over the 34-yard line. Second 11 here in ace rip. Two receivers to each side. And Felder is going long, and that is picked off. <laughs> Did not put enough air under it, and South Alabama will have the ball now at midfield. Second and seven here. Ganey back to throw again. Throws to his right. It's complete. And receiver has some space. He gets the ball up to the 19. Brandon Hayes there on the 27-yard catch. And there's screen. And Ganey is hit. And it's incomplete. Fourth and seven. And here Ganey is back to throw. Throws to his right. It's No, he dropped it. Oh, but we hit him after the pass. So you're going to get a... Personal foul. foul. Roughing, Roughing the passer. passer. Defense. Defense. Still, Still first, first down. down. And here's Ganey to throw. Oh, he's going to run. And he is going to score. Yeah, touchdown. South Alabama. I think that's his second touchdown run. So again, penalties, penalties give South Alabama a score. First and 10 from the 31, Felder here, going to run the wheel concept out of our ace. Two receivers each side here. He throws it, and he's got Horn. Uh, I think that's Horn. Yeah, Horn. And we have another flag. Please don't be holding. First foul. Clipping. Yeah, clipping. Offense. So he'll bring that back. Still first, first down. down. Felder now at the 30 on third and 10. Takes the snap. And he's in trouble, but he gets it away. 
And it's picked off as B. Felder's second interception. And he's showing why he's the backup quarterback. And South Alabama uh, defender gets away and gets down the sideline for probably a good 15-yard return. So he gets it at the 18. First gets knocked backwards a little bit, but once he turns it up, we can't make the tackle there. Of course, to be fair, these are a bunch of offensive players, but still. So, really, the story of today's game was defense. Defense absolutely shut Alabama down, South Alabama down for most of the game. Second half, they started committing some penalties that allowed South Alabama to get a couple touchdowns, but um, the damage had already been done. The offense with, um, took full advantage of the field position they had been given through most of the first half. And um, so, yeah, we win this one going away 48-17. to And uh, I won't call it a big win, but it's a win, Some, an important win as we um, get another conference victory. Uh, we've had a couple big conference wins. We already beat Coastal Carolina. We already beat Appalachian State. you got to figure Louisiana is going to be a challenge. Arkansas State, those are two programs that are right now playing near the top. So uh, these are the games that you sort of have to win if you're going to win the Sun Belt. And here are the team stats. Um, it's not eye-popping. We only had 395 yards of total offense. Probably should have ran the ball more in mop-up duty time. Uh, took a couple sacks that brought that number down. Uh, only 57 yards rushing. We had 338, but again, we were given good field position all day, so I'm not going to be too concerned about that. Um, defensively is where we had our big success today. They, they threw the ball 55 times, but it only ended up with 280 yards passing. That means they got less than four yards per pass. So we'll definitely take that. Um... 21 carries for only 27 yards rushing. Definitely, that's good. And really, defensively, all we're doing is is sitting back and forcing teams to execute. And if you don't, now I guess you have this type of performance for you know, for your team. We did have the two interceptions, but by then the game was put away. Um, did have the one pick uh, on uh, on Ganey. South Alabama, you know, intercepted him the one time, so that was good. Penalty is another big problem today. Eight penalties for 113 yards. Like, that was, that was like, <laughs> South Alabama's both, they, they played important parts of both of South Alabama's touchdown drives. One of those drives was 45 yards of our penalties. So penalties was a problem today, um, but it is what it is. We look at the uh, player stats. Uh, Clark had a good day, 39 to 55, 70%, four touchdowns, no picks. Did take three sacks. Hill had 61 yards rushing. Jeter added 17. Uh, probably need to get more carries for those two guys. Um, Jantz was the uh, hero today, receiving the ball. 11 catches, 110 yards. McDowell, we were just never able to get him loose. We got him seven catches, but only 14 yards. Horn, seven catches. He only had 60. Hill had 50 out of the backfield. Dixon had a couple drops that hurt him, but he ended up with 44. So while Jance had the big day, everybody played pretty well for the most part, um, distributing the, you know, whatever, receiving. And so with that said, it is time. Well, I tell you what, let's go back and look at blocking. We have four sacks with all the linemen. Yeah, the linemen did at various points get beat, which we don't have a very good offensive line. So that's no big shot. Christian Archangel, a big day. Nine tackles from his strong safety position with two sacks. Uh, four TFLs. Was the, yeah, he was the TFL leader and the sack leader. He and uh, Brian Wright each had a pair of sacks apiece. Uh, Gibson, Matt Gibson, the cornerback with the interception. Uh, one deflection from Adam Bailey. Uh, no fumbles for, so obviously none recovered. And we definitely didn't have any of these. No safeties, no blocks. Um, but... Good day all around, uh, for defensively, definitely. Arona, two field goals, uh, two for two, made all of his extra points. Um, no long kicks today, but, you know, did his job. Punting, Dukes, decent day, 47 yards average, but only a 30.5. Um, is that the net? I think it's the net average. Kick returns, Bailey, okay, um, and 17 or 14 average is not bad for punt returns, for us anyway. 26 and a half is definitely a very good kick return. So, um, yeah, good, a good, good win, important win to be able to come and we'll get a dominant performance at home against South Alabama. But this is Vol Force 1. Make sure that you tune in for the next episode. We'll see you guys next time.